The Story of Television Television became available in experimental forms in the late 1920s, and after World War II, an improved form of black and white TV broadcasting became popular in the United States and Britain. In 1927, an American scientist, Philo Farnsworth, made the first electronic television system and filed a patent for it that same year. His camera tube design was known as the image dissector. Like Nikola Tesla, he was ahead of his time. At just 14 years old, he had already established the basic principles of electric television. Farnsworth's invention was intended by its creator to educate people through cultural and sports programs, to bring more understanding to the world of sheer beauty of our different cultures, habits, and beliefs in order to settle the world's problems and bring people together. According to his wife, Pem Farnsworth, Philo saw television as a marvelous teaching tool. There would be no excuse for illiteracy. Parents could learn along with their children. News and sporting events could be seen as they were happening in real time, and we would be able to see and learn about people in other countries and lands all over the world. Differences could be settled around conference tables, without going to war. Unfortunately, the television was swiftly used for other purposes that certainly did not comply with those of its inventor. People were not being educated through his invention, nor had the world's problems been settled because of it. Sadly, according to his son Kent, Farnsworth felt that he had created a monster, and he felt that people wasted too much of their lives watching television. He was reported to have prohibited the viewing of his very own invention in his own home, saying, There's nothing worthwhile on it, and we are not going to watch it in this household, and I don't want it in your intellectual diet. Sadly, Farnsworth died on March 11, 1971, without seeing the realization of his invention, used in the way he had both intended and envisioned. Farnsworth's device was now being used to control the perceptions of billions of people all over the entire planet. Walter Lippmann, author of the book Public Opinion of 1922, stated almost a hundred years ago, people get their information about the world outside their community through the mass media. He continued to state, ours is a problem in which deception has become organized and strong, where truth is poisoned at its source one in which the skill of the shrewdest brains is devoted to misleading a bewildered people. Victor Navasky famously stated, it is based largely on journalism that we make up our national mind. Speaking of the invention of television, a former member of the CIA described it as the greatest scientific indoctrination tool ever devised. Today, people watch television for dozens of hours each week. It could be said that this has been, and still continues to be, one of the most trusted means of communication and form of entertainment purposes, trusted blindly by the world's citizens. But what if you discovered that that very source of information you were introduced to as a small child and had learned to love was above all a means of controlling your perception, your views, your choices, your emotions, and consequently, your behavior? The global mainstream media still today is merely one of the many tools used strategically for priming people's perceptions. If you believe that the television is a reliable source of truth and a means of harmless entertainment, you are deluding yourself. What if that source was a hidden means to controlling the way you visualize, perceive or predict, and even conduct your life without you even knowing it, pulling you into a web of lies, manipulating your everyday life, The very device that every household learned to love and adore for family gatherings the world over has been, and is to this day, a means for influencing public opinion on government issues for political influence, economic control, agenda setting, personal profiling, and opinion shaping. Thus controlling our very perceptions through psychological tactics such as heuristic availability, priming, framing, stereotype activation, exemplification, and of course, subliminal programming as a means for mind control. 
Never watch the television. It becomes you and you become it. Ever notice that the root of the very word government actually means to govern the mind? Mente means mind in Italian. Most of our language is based on Latin and Greek. But think of the phrase, all roads lead to Rome. Interesting that tele in Italian means web. Television is exactly what it says it is, a very web of lies, and we have been played like a pawn in a chess game. Our language is riddled with hidden meaning, but maybe I'll save that for another video. The advancement of technology has made it very easy to control people's perceptions. Whether you realize it or not, you are being manipulated through predictive programming, through mainstream news, the TV shows and the movies you watch, the newspapers you read, the apps you have on your phone, and the music you listen to. Ideas are subtly embedded into your subconscious mind, controlling your thoughts, and consequently your choices, actions and behaviors that always result in an emotion. This makes you vulnerable and more willing to comply and accept that which is to come and is otherwise known as agenda setting. By targeting people's perceptions, the media focus on events set only to distract the population, paving the way for what is to come in favor of the agenda set by the global elite. Subliminal messages are pieces of information that our mind receives without consciously knowing it, so we can't block them out. When we learn new things, we do that by repeating the process until it gets imprinted in our unconscious, so that we could use that knowledge when we need it. In this process, however, our conscious mind chooses which information it will keep. If it finds them to be useful or true, it will store them in our unconscious. If it doesn't, it will not store them. This is why it's so difficult to change our own self-beliefs. These concepts are stored within us for a long time, and our conscious mind believes them to be true. Subliminal messages can be sent to our unconscious in two different ways, visual and auditory. Visual subliminal messages are hidden in images or in video recordings, like movies and TV shows. Auditory messages can literally be placed in any audio recording Subliminal messages are most often used in adverts, using subtle hints or hidden messages. Most subliminal messages are of a sexual nature, as sexual desire is one of the strongest human desires. The purpose of this message is that a customer who sees the image associates themselves with the primal desire of sex and, of course, they can't resist the urge to eat the candy or drink the soda. For those of you who don't already know, look up subliminal messages in Walt Disney movies and other cartoon shows. Yep, that ruined my childhood too. These subliminal messages can be found everywhere. You just need to open your eyes. Most of you already know how subliminal messages have been and are continued to be actively used by the media and giant TV corporations. Subliminal messages in video are used by inserting a single frame with a duration of a fragment of a second, too quick for your conscious mind to pick up on. But no worries, your subconscious absolutely did. In audio recordings, subliminal messages are most often hidden in music, cleverly masked behind other sounds, sometimes at a higher or lower frequency, so that you can't even pick up on it. When the frequency of the audio message is moved slightly out of range of human hearing, you cannot hear it at all. This is the so-called pure subliminal, and it is the most effective way to use subliminal messages. Most of you will know how subliminal messages have been and are continued to be actively used by the media and giant TV corporations. 
A classic example of this continues to puzzle the public for its prophetic and creepily accurate stories. The Simpsons had many moments in their episodes that manifested into reality. In a world where truth can often be stranger than fiction, the writers of The Simpsons seem to be really good at predicting future events. One of the most popular predictions would have to be the prediction that Donald Trump would be President of the United States. The Simpsons aired an episode in the year 2000 that Trump would become President, and this became true in the year 2016. In this episode, you can see Trump headed down the escalator. Watch closely as a Trump supporter drops her support card at the exact same time as in the Simpsons episode. Very interesting indeed. The Simpsons are very well known for their mysterious predictions. How do we suppose its creator, Matt Groening, quite accurately appears to be predicting world events? Is he a time traveler or a Freemason? I'll leave it up to you to work out. If Western culture was supposedly built around ideals of individuality and talk of freedom, the question is, how free are we to make our own choices? Once you have learned to see past the veil that has been placed over our eyes for so long, you may start to note the many ways in which we all have, all been, and are continued to be manipulated on a global scale. The beginning of all faith lies in the wisdom that all men possess a supreme capacity to exercise free will, even in the face of adversity. The miracle of all men lies in the innate knowledge, in the existence, in a dormant version of the self, hidden within the depths of his own being. Always remember, knowledge is power, applied knowledge is freedom. Thank you.